Hi, my name's Mandy and welcome to my YouTube channel, Picketty Stitch. Today I have some sewing, knitting, crochet and a quilt to show you. My name is Mandy and welcome to my YouTube channel Picketty Stitch. Today I have some sewing, knitting and crochet and a quilt to show you. And for those of you who have already subscribed to my channel and seen me before, you'll probably notice I'm in a different setting today. I'm in my dining room. So it's getting colder weather now, it's nice and cosy in here and I'm enjoying myself watching television and doing some crafting. So this time of year, I usually start to make gifts for my grandchildren for their Advent presents. And one thing I have made are these two Tilda mice. So these are for my two youngest granddaughters, Rosie and Ivy. And I thought these would look lovely on the, in their bedroom. So let's talk about the pattern. Like I say, you can go onto the Tilda website. I'll put a link in down below. There's a tab on there what what says free patterns. I think there's quite a few free patterns actually on there. There's mice, there's bears, there's angels. So once you download the PDF and cut it out like this, so this is the head, you then fold your fabric in half, right sides together. You place that on the fabric and then what you would do is draw round and but you, but this bit here is showing you that you don't sew that section okay so you sew round the on the drawn edge okay and I used a 1.5 stitch length so because there's a lot of curves and then you cut out um, out of the fabric you leave a quarter of an inch seam from where you've sewn you cut round and then you turn inside out and you've got your body parts and I use a stuffing called um, from Hobbycraft this is a polyester it's a very high loft so I like stuffing um, toys with that high loft because it's nice and soft and um, yeah, quite pleased with the fabric. I uh, showed you on my last vlog, I purchased from Holly's Haberdashery in Newcastle under Lyme. Holly's um, Haberdashery is also online, so you can order online if you're not local. And uh, yeah, this one is called Maple Farm. So I've usually, um, I mean, I've got, I think this fat quarter, this fat quarter bundle um, had one two three five fabrics in so these are the two fabric uh, fat quarters I haven't used okay I was thinking of making a project bag with one of them I think they are beautiful and the fabric range is called Maple Farm so I believe whoops this one is called Gracie this fabric um, I think it's in a it's like a stone or a wheat colour. This one is called Birdie. Rose Hip and the colourway is Rose Hip. And this one is called Pauline. And this one is in the mauve colourway. So I've just used the three fat quarters to make the mice. And I've got quite a few strips of fabric left as well. So obviously these will be used for a quilt really good quality cotton as well so yeah I, I enjoy buying the fat quarter bundles because it gives you quite a bit of choice and Sarah who owns Holly's Aberdashery is very good at curating but uh, putting the bundles together so yeah really pleased with these I think they're really cute so one thing I did do I did do a little bit of a boo-boo which wouldn't be me without doing a boo-boo would it I did <clears throat> make these wings incorrectly I made them and sewed them on upside down um, so these point upwards where these are correct these point downwards and I didn't realize my mistake until it come to making this one 
So, uh, but never mind. Um, I still think they look pretty. Yeah. So yeah, they've got the the mice's tails as well, and I think they look really cute. So I'm really pleased. I'm going to make um, an angel next, and I've already purchased the doll skin. So I'll just show you the doll skin I've purchased. This is in the I think it's called the caramel colourway. It is the Tilda. The Tilda doll skin. So this was the only um, shade they had because I wanted to do one, I think it's called Biscuit and I wanted to do the darker one as well, the, the darker brown fabric. So I wanted a range of different skin tones. And I have seen a lot of people use like, um, you can buy the special Tilda wool for the angel's hair and some people will use mohair as well uh, for, for the hair. But I've got some of this funky fur wool. And this is like a silvery colour. And I thought that might, that's blowing out a bit, but I thought that, if I bring it back, maybe, yeah, that's a bit better. I thought that might be a bit of fun for make the angel's hair. So hopefully next week, I'll start on that project and I'll be able to show you how that's turned out. I used um, it's um, a little pot of screen print paint I've got for fabric and I just dipped some pins in uh, the ball end of a pin so something like that. I dipped it in the paint, tried it on some spare fabric first and then um, obviously I then put the eyes on. So. Yeah, I'm really pleased. I think they look really pretty. The 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 one thing is is that it did say to use um, some embroidery floss for the nose, and um, it said to use six strands, which I did on this one. And I thought the nose looked a bit too. It was a bit too bulky, so I only used three strands for this nose. So this one's got a a slightly smaller one. But there they are. And I think. When they open their advent presents, I think I'll make this day five. Um, well, the the baby won't be able to open hers, but um, me or the granddaughter will. So I think they look really pretty. So there we go, two angel mice. Right, I'll pop those over there and um, just show you as well some more Tilda fabric while I'm just talking about the Tilda. See, I've, I've got quite a bit of the fat quarters left. I've only used three and there's quite a bit left of these fat quarters. So, yeah, I could either use them for Make the Angels or... Um, for quilting so I pop them over there and I'll show you the I couldn't resist buying this lovely green colorway now I don't know which one this one's called might tell me well it says it's green but I might see one in a minute but there's my latest one if I can put the link in, I will. And this one, I love. You know, do you ever buy any fabrics and you just don't want to cut into them because you just like looking at them? And that's me. And this one is absolutely beautiful. I think that's one of my favourites. They're so delicate. Little prints on there. And then there's this one. It's got... It looks like it's got urns of flowers on and then there's little bees. Oh, that was lovely. And then this one is like a paisley. So I have decided to make my um, granddaughter a quilt. Because it wouldn't be me unless I did. 
and um, I thought I might applique some shapes on so I thought I might show you the process of that um, and I'll be using some of these fabrics for that so that's my Tilda fabric collection so far so the other plan I had for sewing because that's all the sewing I've done this this month really is make those mice um, I don't know if you've all been watching Lisa Comfort on YouTube she's been um, doing some sew alongs and she did one recently for the carry trousers now I have this pattern simplicity and I made myself some cotton trousers I think it was a couple of years ago now but these are similar to the carry trousers they have an elasticated back now what she did is she actually made them with Pontaroma and I didn't know you could make them with Pontaroma so when I looked at the 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 back it says you can use um jerseys and putting on a bit of lockdown weight i thought well i might buy some pontaroma and make these but what i will do is taper them in more because i don't like um it too baggy a bit longer and taper them in and uh, yeah i think that will help with the you know the fit and everything so that's what I plan to do so I'm on the lookout for some black pontaroma so hopefully next time I vlog I'll have these made in the pontaroma to show you and also um, I've downloaded I've purchased and downloaded the, the Morris blazer by Grainline Studios now I don't know um, so a couple of vlogs back i showed you some lovely blue scuba i'd purchased to make a jacket with and it was a butter rip pattern and um, i didn't want to cut into the blue scuba because obviously it was expensive and i wanted to have a practice first making this particular jacket because it's made of a stretch and it had a notch collar and i made one in some blue jersey I had some blue pontaroma I'd left over from a dress I made and then I made another one in scuba because this is the fabric I've got as a scuba so I, I give that a trial run um, but I couldn't quite make out where the notches were on the pattern I couldn't see very well so I've decided I'll download, download the Morris blazer and give that a whirl so I'm hoping to make the Morris blazer so I might buy enough black pontaroma to make these trousers and the morris blazer just to see how that is now if the morris blazer is a good fit and i like it i might extend it down and use it for the scuba so hopefully i'll have a couple of makes to show you next time i've also had this pattern in my stash now i think for about three years and um, i've decided i am going to make this up now I don't chose my fabric yet what I'm going to use I've got lots in my stash so I'm either going to make one colour such as this blue one or I might make um, two different uh, colours so I haven't quite decided yet so hopefully next time I'll have a dress trousers and a blazer to show you okay so uh, the next thing I wanted to talk to you about is some knitting I've done in some crochet. I have been watching a vlog just lately and it's Jeanette and it's I think her vlog is called Crafty Clegs and she makes a lot of she crochets a lot of what you call amigurumi and she I'm sure it was her vlog where she showed some willow figures so willow is basically um, it's 
accompany what make these wooden figures. I'll put a photograph up to show you. And then there was a pattern um, which I got, which I purchased via Ravelry um, to make my youngest daughter, who's just had a baby, a couple of willow figures. I don't know what possessed me. <laughs> so this is the first one. She'll go mad for showing it. But this is a mother who's breastfeeding her baby. Okay. And... Um, I bought some Rikarumi cotton. This is double knitting cotton, but the crochet hook is a 3.5. So I found it quite tough on my fingers um, to use a thicker yarn with a, such a thin hook. But um, I've enjoyed doing it, don't get me wrong. And my daughter thinks it's a little bit surreal, a bit weird, but yeah. <laughs> So the baby has got dark hair, so I've done it as much as I can to real life. And the the blanket, they suggested in the pattern that you used an embroidery floss. Um, I think it was three strands. And the pattern is the Call the Midwife blanket. Uh, so we have a series in England called Call the Midwife. And apparently this blanket featured, this pattern featured in... Um, one of the shows so it's called you can get lots of free tutorials on youtube showing you how to make call the midwife blanket i might make one actually for the baby but um i hadn't got the patience to crochet in this so what i did is i ended up um just crocheting it out of some pink um sparkle wool i've got so that's that and then <laughs> i've got to do the hair for this this is a little girl so this is her daughter and she has got curly hair so i curled the hair and i've just got to um straighten that up cut it so it's nice and neat and then i've got to um put some bunches in it and there's some little flowers i've embroidered on um now in the pattern this little girl had a teddy but unfortunately, I just haven't got the patience to crochet such an in intricate, um, sort of, should I say, piece. So um, I have got these, found these buttons. And um, not that I bought these. These were just in a pack. You know, when you get packs of different colour buttons. And I thought, oh, that well, might be worth just sewing a I don't know yet in the pattern it's a back they've got a backpack on but I haven't got the patience to do that but there we go um I've crocheted the willow tree figures so I'm I think I'm going to put some bows in this little girl's hair and um perhaps sew her arm round her mum so but um I, my daughter quite can't make up her mind really what she thinks of these and I don't know what possessed me but anyhow there we go so I think that might be my last um, attempt with Ami, Ami Gurumi but I have got these um, little Rico Rumi um, balls of wool um, these are double knitting cotton and I thought I might um, crochet some face cloths for advent presents for my girls. So, so there we go. That's the only <laughs> bit of amigurumi I'll ever do, I think. I think it took me ages to make those and um, there's a lot of work goes into them. And hats off to anyone who manages to do it because I think it's marvellous. So my next make is a little crocheted matinee jacket. It's blowing out a bit so I'll bring it back a little bit to show you. This is made out of Robin double knitting and it's from their Sparkle range. So basically you crochet a yoke and then you separate off for the arms and the rest is crocheted as one, the body, and then you rejoin your, uh, join, rejoin your yarn 
to crochet the arms. Now I've popped on these little buttons here. I bought these from a from the range a long time ago. So the range in the UK, like I say, I think is more or less an equivalent to Hobby Lobby, only they don't sell fabrics. So yeah, well, not the fabrics like Hobby Lobby do. So I thought these would be apt and I've sewn three buttons on because her name is Rosie. Now this was a hundred gram, okay. So I used it for the baby's blanket. I've used it for, oops, this um, matinee jacket. And I've also, with what's left, crocheted so, uh, knit some little booties. I was crocheting the booties at first, but um, it was using far too much wool. So it didn't take long to knit these, okay. And what I've done is I've sewn the same buttons on there, the two little roses. So they go with the jacket. Now the strange thing is, um, I order sometimes fabric from a, a UK online shop called Stitchy B. And she did a vlog not so long ago because when she sends you the fabric, it's beautifully wrapped in tissue paper and she always puts a ribbon round it. The presentation's lovely. And she always says that she's very, you know, conscious of the environment. And um, she always says that she wraps it in ribbon so you can reuse the ribbon. And this ribbon is what I've reused from um, Stitchy Bee's parcels. So, yeah. So I'll show you where I've had the pattern from. So this is a Peter Pan and it's book number 372. And there's cro these are all crochet patterns in here and they're for double knitting, um, four ply and three ply. So I think yeah so mine was on um, page 32 and it was just the simple cardigan there i think they've got four buttons but i've just used the three because they are quite heavy these little roses are these they're like pearlized so that's that and then for the booties so i use an old patterns or paintings i don't know how you pronounce it patterns uh book for the booties okay this is a really old old one i've had this years and this is the pattern for the booties i would like to make next um this little cardigan it's like a little ballet cardigan and this here is edged in like a lace or a tulle so I thought that would be pretty and also we've got a bonnet and on the other side I've seen these mittens I like as well so um, yeah I thought that was something on it it's a little bee <laughs> but um, is it a bee yeah a bee and a flower so uh, that's what I'd like to do next and they're all little gifts I can put in there advent presents so my next make is another cardigan for my granddaughter. Um, now she's age three, going on to four soon. So I made the size four to five. It made sense that did. Um, so again, it's an old pattern. It's a patens. And this uses quite a lot of yarn up. Now, usually if I'm going out somewhere and I see some yarn, um, I will purchase 200 grams and I know that will get me either a jumper or a cardigan for an age, you know, for a child of three years of age. Um, but like I say, I did run out. Um, so I ended up using three balls. Now this is the third ball. That's how much I've got left. Um, because I needed just enough wool, I think I need for 20 rows of the button band. 
So yeah, I lost to what we call yarn chicken. So this is an acrylic, it's Robin Double Knit in the Sparkle range and I thought it'd be really lovely to make a, a, a cardigan in this red for Christmas. So the sparkles are red as well, they're showing up as if they're silver but they're not, they're actually red. Okay, the shade is 5724 because Robin don't name their colourways, they just give you a number. So, I don't know what I'm going to do with this. I could perhaps make the baby a matching cardigan. I don't know yet. But this is the actual cardigan. So I'll hold it up for you and show you a bit better. I love this pattern. But like I say, you can tell by the way it's bumping up and everything that it would take that extra yarn than if I'd knit it just knit and purl. Now this is what you call knit flat um, and this is how we always used to knit where you'd knit your, your sleeves separate, your back separate and your fronts and then you'd sew them all together. So this is what we call a raglan shape and what I've done is if you look at the pattern the, rag oh, the raglan is a lot thinner okay and I like um, to show the raglan. So what I did, instead of, if you were shaping with raglan, say on a sleeve, you would knit one, slip one, knit one, and pass that slip stitch over. You get to the other end of your sleeve, and to shape the raglan on the other side, going the opposite way, you would knit two together and then knit one. Whereas what I've done here is I've knit two stitches first before I started any shaping of the raglan. So it gives me a thicker raglan, which I prefer because I think it looks far neater and pretty. So, and that's the back. You see? really is going to be very warm cardigan this is and the buttons I purchased from a garden centre I'd seen these and they're actually not showing up quite how I'd like it to um got no paper to show you behind but if I put this behind you might just see it's a heart shape so they are plastic because at first I thought they were glass and I thought, well, that's useless because, you know, they'll break in the washing machine, but they are plastic. So I bought these red sparkly buttons because little girls, they, they do love, they love a sparkle, don't they? I do too. So that's the Christmas cardigan. So that's another little advent gift. Okay. So the next thing I've got on the go, whoa, just about to lose my wool, is um, the Latte Coat by Lisa Chemery. Uh, and for those of you who've watched my vlogs, you know I do enjoy knitting Lisa Chemery's patterns. And I hope I haven't butchered a name. Um, it, I do apologise if I have. And her website is called Froginet. And uh, you can either purchase her patterns off her website, and I'll put a link in down below, it's Froginet, or you can go on to the Ravelry website um, and purchase a pattern from there. The Ravelry website, for those who aren't knitters, is a little bit similar to the fold line, what the sewists have fold line. So basically, we can um, source patterns through that website well with Ravelry I source knitting and crochet patterns so I have knit um, quite a few things from Lisa which has been I have knitted quite a few garments that Lisa Chemery has designed for my youngest grandson and this one is called the Latte Coat and as usual I am knitted it in one of my favourite wools and it's the Berger de France and it's from their Brisian 7 range. And I put this wool is for sale. Um, I purchased it from Holly's Haberdashery again in, New um, 
a Newcastle underline. You can buy the wool online as well. And this colorway is called Rhinoceros. I love this wool. It is an acrylic, but you wouldn't think it was acrylic because it just feels a little bit different. Because I thought it was wool at first, but it's not, it's acrylic. But I do enjoy knitting in this because it grows so quick. So at the moment I'm on six millimeter needles and um, I've knit the hood. So let me see if I can show you the hood. So that's the hood. I mean, obviously that has to be grafted together. And then this is the back of the coat. And what I like about these um, modern uh, knitwear designers is that they all knit, um, they all design a pattern where it's all in one. So you knit the body and then you knit the sleeves afterwards because you haven't got no seams. There's no seams whatsoever. So this is not knit in the flat at all. And, you know, by the time you've done all that, yeah, I've, I've nearly done this now. I've just got the sleeves. So, whoops, getting my microphone oh, wire in the way. So, yeah. So these are on six millimeter needles. So you can see the sides are quite chunky. So it'll grow very quickly. And again, this is a lovely raglan. Once I get the idea of how to, how this goes, I think I'll start trying to convert my flat knits into where we do an all in one. So what, um, if this was a jumper for myself, what I would do is go so far down and then knit the sleeve so you're, so you're not lumping and bumping about a lot. You've, it's a lot easier to knit that way and then go back to completing the body. But yeah, and I think um, autumn, this time of year, um, autumn, is when I really love this time. I really love this time of year, autumn, because this is when you can get your knitting out and um, start making those warmer clothes. So I have, I do think, oh, I, you know, another couple of nights and this will be finished because the sleeves will be done. But actually afterwards I have to knit the braid on. And um, I think she has got a tutorial on how to knit the braid. So the front parts um, has this thick braid what you knit. And she does warn you that um, it's not a mindless knit. So there's no popping the television on and think you're going to be able to knit and relax. You, you know, you have to have your full concentration. So hopefully next time I vlog, I'll be able to show you the finished article. So that's the latte coat. A little idea for an advent gift and these are um i bought a panel for, again from holly's haberdashery it was a long time ago and i think it's called scandy by makawe and basically it was a panel and it had these shapes on there was a heart a circle um, a star and a bird so you cut round them and obviously sew them right sides together leave a little gap stuff them and then just close up with hand sewing and what i've done is i've sewn i did put the buttons where the eyes were at first and it didn't look very nice so each one has like a pattern on so i've sewn a little button in the middle of each one so sometimes I buy these plastic buttons and they're just full of, you usually get a lot of little tiny buttons. So let me just show you. So what I tend to do is take all the little buttons out and keep them separate in a tin. You can use them for doll clothes and things. And this is what I've done here. 
I've used the little buttons and I think they look really effective. I've got quite a few made up. So what I thought I would do is perhaps um, get some fishing line, okay, and thread it through and then so they were dangling and I have a bird on as well obviously and then I've ordered some wooden beads so I can thread the wooden beads on and some silver ones and I thought those would make nice little Christmas decorations so a little advent gift for my daughters so they'll have four in each one so I thought those look really pretty so yeah I just the last two nights I've just sat here slowly sewing these and sewing the buttons on and I've really enjoyed myself so been watching television and yeah making these I've got none left now but out of that panel I bought I've got quite a few um six nine 13 I've got 13 maybe more I don't know but yeah I thought they were really pretty so I've been really enjoying making these so I'm hopefully going to source another panel and make some more so those are that so I'm getting a bit swamped now <laughs> so this is my latest quilt I've made And this is, this is when you call, this is bit, this stage is what you call piecing, when you've pieced the top together. So this is called the disappearing nine patch pattern. So basically, I bought a layer cake. It's a mode one. I bought this about five or six years ago. And unfortunately, I don't know what. The, the fabric range was so you can't quite see it in all its glory yet but um, I just love the colours they're quite pastel -y. and there's one I'm not showing it off in the best way am I really sat here like this Let's see if I can stand up and show you a bit better. So I bought a layer cake which is a 10 inch, it's a pack of 10 inch squares and what I like about pre-cut fabrics is because you get the whole colour range. And it's so interesting to, to sew with. So I happened to go into Abercorn's and I saw this blue. So I think I bought a large piece of this fabric and when I come home I realised it belonged to this fabric range. So that's why I was able to do the disappearing nine patch pattern. So I'm not going to do a tutorial on that because there's lots of tutorials on the nine patch. But basically, you get your 10 inch square and you cut it um, down the middle and, down the, and, and across the middle that way. So you've got four, five inch squares. So then you mix up your fabrics and you then have, so three, three and three. And then sew them all together. So you've got a big square. So there's three five inch, three five inch, three five inch squares. But you have to make sure that the middle square is blue and that's why you need that extra fabric if you're using a layer cake. So that's why all the blue fabric is in these little squares. So there we go. And then you mix up, you once you've got your big square and you've got your blue square in the middle you then cut down the center again and cut across again and then you mix up all your squares together i'll put a tutorial in link down below for this pattern 
and um, yeah disappearing nine patch it's great fun to do and it's cheaper to buy a layer cake and do it that way than buying the charm packs because your charm packs are five inch pre-cuts whereas your layer cake is cheaper and you're getting four lots of charm packs really so that is that i've got to now quilt that up but i think i'm going to get my christmas projects out the way and done with first before i embark on quilting this and i'm thinking of hand quilting this so i've already bought some pearlized cotton um, so i can do that and perhaps looking at january to finish this off and this is for a single size bed but i've also got to source some fabric for the borders and the binding so and that's the thing when you buy these pre-cuts you've got to realize that you do have to buy some extra fabric for your borders that's if you're having a border some people don't they just would um put a binding on this so just looks as good so um yeah i hope you enjoyed uh, this vlog and i'm hoping next week that i can show you some more makes because that's what i'll be doing now <laughs> until until christmas is making lots of presents and gifts so i hope this vlog has found you well and um, until next week happy crafting